Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training, and I'm just doing a quick video about setting up OB Studio for recording off of a computer screen. I use this software to do a lot of my screen recordings for my YouTube tutorials, and I thought a quick thing on how I'd set it up might be useful to some people. So all I've done is done a Google search for OB Studio, downloaded and installed it, and I've opened it up, and here you can see I've just got a blank screen, it's not ready to record anything. First thing, I have to tell it what screen to record. So I'm on a laptop with two screens plugged into it, and I could record either of them. To do that, you come down to this list of sources here, and you add in the screen as a source. All you've got to do is click this little plus button, and choose Display Capture. It'll ask you to give it a name. OK, and there you are. You now see I've got a display showing me what I'm capturing. I'm getting this nice bit of recursion here, because I'm actually capturing the thing you're watching at the moment. I do have the option here to choose which screen I'm capturing. So I've got two screens running on my laptop at the moment. At the moment I'm capturing the one you can see, but I could choose to capture display one instead, which is the other screen, which you can see I've got the old control panel on. So set those up, then click OK, and now all you've got to do is set the settings for how the file is recorded. Now to do that, you come over here and click Settings. What a surprise. And there's lots of stuff in here because this is designed for you to be doing live transmissions off to the web. But I'm not going to fiddle with any of that. I'm just going to change the actual way it records stuff onto the hard drive. So to do that, I'll come to Output. And here you can see some settings for streaming, which is how it'd be going off to the internet. And some settings here for how it's recorded onto the hard drive. So the first thing is where it's going to go. Let's just change that. Get it off of the program's drive. And then come down here to recording quality, which is set to same as stream, which is that up there. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go for indistinguishable large file size. Got enough space in my hard drive. I have tried going to lossless, tremendously large file size. Didn't really notice much difference. So I go for that one. Next thing is recording format. It defaults to doing FLV files, which are these days fairly useless. So I'll come in here and I'll change that to MP4. Obviously, it's just deciding what the kind of final file is going to be. You do have a few different options like MOVs and so on, but I'm going to go for MP4. Next, you've got the encoder. And you can see here I've got four settings on this system. Now, there's X264, which is a very good encoder. It does it entirely in software. But I found that if I'm using this inside of EDIUS, EDIUS doesn't like it so much. It loads it, but everything becomes a little bit sticky. So I stay away from X264, and I use one of these. I've got QVS, which is QuickSync, which I've got because I've got a laptop that's got QuickSync on it. Or I've got this NVENC, which is NVIDIA. Either of those work. So QVS is using the one that's built into the Intel processor, and the NVIDIA one's using the one built into the graphics card. Only time I've ever had an issue here is if I used QVS, and then I'm doing an edit tutorial, which includes me talking about encoding with QuickSync, then that causes a problem because I start EDIUS doing something which happens to also be using the QVS. Otherwise, I've not found any major difference between these two, to be perfectly honest. You know, QVS is going to be using something in the processor. You might not have the kind of processor that's got QuickSync, so you wouldn't even have that as the option. NVEC is using something in the graphics card. Again, you might not have that if your graphics card doesn't have it. I tend most of the time to choose the NVIDIA one. The only other things I've got to worry about is what's the actual physical size, you know, how many pixels am I capturing, and what's the frame rate. And to do that, I come down to video, and you can see here you've got size you're capturing, which is 1920, 1080, and you've got the size that you're actually making it into. So, you know, I'm filming something that's 1920, 1080, this is scaling it. Well, I don't want to do that. I want to change it to the same as the original. I'll do all my scaling afterwards. If I'm not scaling it, the actual downscaling filter doesn't matter. So that's OK. And then finally, you've got the frame rate. Now, for most of my YouTube videos, I leave it at 30 frames a second because that's fine. It's going to be on a computer screen. Most people's screens will be running at some kind of multiple of 30. So that's a good thing to go for. If I'm going to try and make a DVD out of this for us to watch in the UK, I'd be very tempted to change that to either 25 or 50. You notice that's not an option. But if you pop over to here and choose integer values, you can type in 25 or 50. 50 might work better if you're going to a DVD, so I'd probably set that. But of course, if you're going to do that, you've really got to make sure the screen you're capturing is also showing stuff at 50. Now, that's not a setting in OBS. This is the setting I'm filming stuff into OBS. The frame rate of the computer screen is set in your display properties. So I'm on Windows 10. I'm just going to go to Display Settings, choose the screen that I'm going to record, 
pop down to the display of adapter properties, go to the monitor and then I can change the frame rate here. If it lets you. You notice here it won't let me. It doesn't let me change it to 50 hertz because the monitor I'm viewing this on won't let me do 50 hertz. If I look at my second screen here, I can change that to 50 hertz. So if I could set my second screen up to 50 and set OBS to 50 and get it to capture the second screen, that's probably the best quality I'm going to get if I'm trying to go and make a DVD out of it. I don't do that 99% of the time. I'm actually capturing stuff to go off to YouTube, in which case I just leave this thing at 30. But if I was going to make a DVD, I might try changing it. But really, that's it. There's some audio settings. So you change the sample rate and stuff. There's a way in this where you can record multiple audio tracks. So you can actually record your computer sounds onto one audio track and your microphone onto another audio track, which is much better when it comes to editing. I tend not to bother with that because I will actually record my microphone completely separately with Audacity and I'll just marry them up afterwards in the editing. So that's all I really fiddle with. I just fiddle with the output and I fiddle with the video. Then I'll come out of this and then when I'm ready to go, I'll just click start recording. Off it goes recording stuff. When you're finished, you stop recording and you've got an MP4 file. Now to make up my videos for YouTube, I don't stop there. I will then take that file, put it into an editing program and I'll do a lot of editing on it. I'll get rid of all the stuff that I've fluffed up, try and tighten things up, try and make sure everything actually makes sense, even re-record bits of dialogue if I don't think I talked properly whilst I was recording it. But that's really all I do in here. Display capture, settings, change the output, change the video, record stuff. Anyway, I hope that helps you if you need to do some screen recordings. If you've got any questions, you can email me, david at dvctraining.co.uk, pop onto my Facebook page, go to the website where you can find more videos. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. See you next time.